Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Lisa, and I'm joined by Leah, Kate, and Bonnie, talking about our one cool science thing. Bonnie already talked about Alice Ball, and Katie already talked about Mary Ainsworth. But before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gals. Yay! So the question I have for my get to know you question is, do you think money and resources should be spent to explore space, or is it better spent helping people here on Earth, and why? Ooh, dun-dun-dun. I'm always so torn on this because I do, I love space, the final frontier, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, I miss, I miss the full on NASA program. Like I miss us going, you know, up and exploring. And I know we have SpaceX and I'm very, I I say that with like a cringe in my face. I'm very happy about SpaceX. (laughs) You look very happy. I really am. When they did the, um, the rockets that would return, I mean, like I was watching it and I was like, oh, okay. And then when I saw them come back, the reusable rockets, I went, game changer and then i got excited about like what spacex could do um the whole sending a tesla car to mars was like cool man <laughs> oh look marketing right exactly so you turned it into a giant advertisement of now my car will be I, anyway so it's like it's difficult but at the same time like you need that kind of egotistical money to be able to get stuff like that done so i get it but it's unfortunate. Um, so, but there's a lot that could be done here. <laughs> but at the same time, I always wonder, are we at such an irreparable damage here that we kind of got to look for an escape mm-hmm. path for a little bit? Like, did we ruin it so bad that maybe looking to space and beyond is like a good backup plan? So I'm kind of on the fence. Um, if I had to write the check tomorrow, I'd say spend it here on Earth. That's probably where I'd be at. Uh, just because of the technology that we're at and the needs that we're at. Mm-hmm. What do you guys say? I almost kind of want to say it needs to be a balance. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. A little bit of both. Yeah. I don't know if that's a cop out, but I feel like you need um, the inspiration of what's out there and the intrigue to inspire people right. that are here. But the people here still need to be supported. You they know, need their and have basic what they, needs. Matt. Basic needs. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that that's just necessarily a money thing to make that happen. Right. So. An access, a resource. Right. Yeah. And lots of times that is money. But, um, you know, I feel like we've talked about people that have seen the space program and been inspired by that mm-hmm. and have become scientists and have done these amazing things. Yeah. So that I don't have know that created we can a new do kind of map. Either, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. I can see that. I'm I'm along the same lines of of why not both like <laughs> yes that's like, fair I mean we do know more about like space than we do about our oceans which yes. is like crazy weird, weird. especially seeing how like what is it two thirds of the land mass is water yeah. and it's like <laughs> I'm pretty sure the same stuff we use in space with like the airtight stuff could yeah. also be used under the ocean perhaps like <laughs> <laughs> not Ooh. a scientist it's like but not a vacuum like I don't know. But yeah, like, why not both? Right. Yeah. You say with like a question. Mark. Like we get, there, there is plenty of money. Yeah. And plenty of jobs to go around. Why not both? Like we, we yeah. do need to take care of what we got here. Right. But you know, space is just cool. It is very cool. It's hard to compete with space. It is. Like there's it that widens uh, the imagination. Oh, there's that, that question that goes around with um, like you ask ladies, uh, firemen or policemen. Mm-hmm. The correct answer is astronaut. Yes, always, every time. <laughs> yes, <absolutely. laughs> I believe the answer you're seeking is astronaut. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, but we 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 probably should have a plan B. Yeah. Even if it's if it's whether it's us or like the mm. giant meteor right. that's due at any moment. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I mean, we need to know when it's coming so we can yeah. choose, choose that moment to just do whatever mm. the fuck we want right, for exactly. once in our fucking lives. It's like 1999. <laughs> Prince will finally Prince be wants. right. Yes. <laughs> 
Lisa, what about you, darling? Yeah. I mean, so obviously we have to take care of here and now, right? Right. But also I think one of humanity's basic needs is vision and dreams. Yeah. And, and space really helps that. And it does. I mean, we yeah. have we have actually kind of lost the practice of gazing at the stars because yeah. there is so much ambient light. We don't see mm-hmm. them anymore, right? Yeah. But throughout history, we have looked up and wondered, mm-hmm. and there's some value there. And the space program returns benefits that we can't imagine we got, until like, we Velcro get Velcro out like, of the space program. Velcro, I mean, tang. Microwave. Always tang. <laughs> and <laughs> The space and, pen? And the, the <laughs> pen. And, oh, I had and one of those. Yes. All of those <laughs> problems, the process of solving those problems yeah. brings benefits. And this is what generative creativity does, right? And yeah. so we need those inspirational challenges to think about the world in a different way. Yeah. And we, when we were like, well, but if it isn't, you know, right here, this grind in front of us, it's not worth messing with. That just feels sad and narrow. It does. Yeah. And and not forward thinking and outward thinking. Yeah. And space gives us the opportunity to like band together and reach for the stars Yeah, and not worry about, okay, what are the petty little squabbles we have here on earth? Right. Right. And there's some value in that. Yeah. It does allow you to think bigger picture. Yeah. Like what's the bigger Literally. picture? What's the <laughs> Yes, exactly. What's the what's the priority when you're out there in the big blue? <laughs> yeah, and what might we encounter? And you know, we haven't we haven't found the Klingons yet, so maybe we're bored with space travel. Right. But maybe they're you know, sick of us, they like they one look at us and went <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. You know, the aliens lock their spaceship doors when they drive past Earth mm, because <laughs> Exactly right. What are they doing there? Don't make direct eye contact mm, with that planet, just, kids. <laughs> fine. Don't look. Shh. It's quite possible. Yeah. <laughs> so all of that. I dig it. Who yeah. is your one cool thing, darling? So as I was thinking about a science gal, actually this is someone that Leah told me about. Yes. But I have started working for Stanley Security and they sell security systems. And I did not know that the very first patent for a security system was granted to a woman, to a woman and her husband. Yes. And so I started digging in, and her name is Marie Van Britten Brown. She doesn't have seven names. She only she has no, four. But she has four. She has four. Yes, which is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a good inventor name. <laughs> yes. And she was born in Queens, New York. Queens. In 1922. Cool. And she became a nurse, and uh, she was an African-American woman, and she was a nurse, and her husband was an electric technician electronic technician Mm -hmm. and so she worked strange hours because nurses don't work nine to five yeah they work all the times they work different times Mm -hmm. and she was home at different times than her husband and her neighborhood had challenges getting the police to show up if there was an emergency it was queens yeah it, yeah <laughs> um shocking right <laughs> and so she was looking for a solution to this yeah um and she created a security system and there were uh depending on which source you look at three or four different peepholes in the front door at different heights right and a camera that would go up and look at all the peepholes. So if you had a really tall criminal at your door, or maybe a Dennis the Menace is at your door, right. or you know, <laughs> you could see who is out there from anywhere in the house. Mm-hmm. And if you were alarmed by this, you could push a button and it would automatically communicate with the police. Nice. There's nothing in the articles about whether they would show up based on that if they wouldn't right. show up based on a phone call. Correct. But the theory is, you know. In case the police got like themselves together that particular day and were answering phone calls, it could happen. And <laughs> in addition to that, um, if you don't have to go to the door to see who's at the door, there's a level yeah. of safety and security in that as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right? So, and if you did know the person at the door and you wanted to let them in you could do that remotely as well just kind of push Mm -hmm. the button and the door unlocks yeah the patent that they got in 1966 has been referenced as recently as 2013 oh by other patents okay and really the principles the thing that's really interesting is the principles of this system 
are still a lot of the principles of security sure. today, mm-hmm. right? So the foundation. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just for homes, but for businesses. Yeah. And so, you know, the video monitoring is the first mm-hmm. closed circuit television mm-hmm. system. Um, remote control door locks. Nice. That wasn't a thing that existed. Right, exactly. And, and then so she invented that. Um, that push button alarm trigger and the idea mm-hmm. of being able to communicate based on the panic button. Yeah. There you go. So there's some value there. I wonder if banks had it before home security or not. You know, uh, but that's that's also my movie knowledge. That's uh-huh. just seeing somebody in a movie press a button in mm. a bank robbery and then there's the alarm going. That could have been a, like a movie thing and not a real thing. <laughs> well, it, it is totally a real thing. And okay. we can do panic buttons in all kinds of businesses now. Right. right. And this is, you know, not only, you know, if there's a home invasion or if there is a shooter, like businesses have Some a lot of, of security concerns, right. right? Or just an emergency, everybody get out kind right. of situation, fire. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so that technology, the, according to what I read, this may be one of the first patents that references this. Gotcha. There you go. Um, and then it's just been built on. And then yeah. um, that two-way voice communication is also part of this system yeah. and wasn't super common. Right. Um, and, the, you know, the the closed circuit, the technology for a lot of this did exist, but it was y- invented, a lot of it, for World War II. Right. Gotcha. Right. This is a practical it, use for it in home use. Right. Because, you know, the military spends money on this stuff. <laughs> of course they do. Of course they do, <laughs> right? And then, but to get this invention into how do I make my home safer right. was really part of what she was instrumental in doing. Yeah, she gave a purpose for it. Right. And so the the industry that this has spawned, the home security industry, is about a $1.5 billion industry now. Wow. Um, Goodness. But there's no evidence, and there's very little written about her. She got the patent, Mm -hmm. and it was she and her husband, both their names are both on the patent, Mm -hmm. Um, and there was an article in the New York Times about her Mm -hmm. that has a photograph, and some of the things that I found, there were other photographs, and then are they really her or not, but they're sure this one in the paper Mm -hmm. was, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And it doesn't appear that they ever made any profit from the invention. Oh, Hmm. it happens. Right? Unfortunately, like more often than it ever should. Right? They wait till like the patent expires? Well, because, so the question that this, um, you know, evidence suggests that they did not pursue commercial opportunities, but here's the question. Right. We're in the mid 1960s. Yeah. In the U.S., mm-hmm. this is an African American couple. Yeah, um, specifically an African American woman. Even though she's educated, I mean, she's a nurse. Yeah. right? What are the odds that she has the social capital and ability to commercialize mm-hmm. that? Right. Yeah. And so that got me looking at um, female inventors. Yeah. And wondering about why so the number of patent applications that have a woman attached has gone up considerably in the last couple of decades. It was 17% in 1995. Gotcha. And it's up to somewhere around, it was up to about 30% in 2015. So that's doubled in 20 years, essentially. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's great. Yeah. Still only 30%. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, And so I went and looked to see what... The research says, is this just that girls don't invent things as much? No. no. Probably not. No, it's no. probably just they don't patent it. Well, so there's a couple pieces. Right. One of it is the patent. And yeah. so you need money to patent. It's about $10,000 to put a patent together. It's not cheap. Right. right. It's not yeah, cheap. exactly. That's why you work for a company that pays for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you're going to do this, and a patent has to have a commercial application. That's part of what makes it right. patentable. Yeah. Right. Um, but if you're going to do something with that, you need a source of money, unless you're like independently wealthy. But right. not everybody is, and Correct. a nurse and electrician probably not. Yeah. Um, and you know, in 2017, only 2.2 percent of all the venture capital funding went to women. Yeah. Right. So there's a huge gap there, mm-hmm. and a it's lot huge potential m- as huge well. Po- oh, yeah. absolutely. Because mm-hmm. girls got ideas, <laughs> and, and they see the world differently. Right. Yeah. So this is an idea that maybe wouldn't have occurred to a man the same way. Right. Because you know. I have the safety of my own domain and I am, yes, I don't want to admit that there could be an intruder on my domain kind of thought. 
Right. And it's a lot, I think, easier for women to be like, hey, I need to have this protection. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there are a lot of, I and mean, we see a lot of female inventors, right? But mm-hmm. maybe it doesn't get patented. And then the commercial applicability changes. Right. Right? Because if you don't protect your intellectual property, then once you start to be successful, somebody else just does it. Right. And, mm-hmm. Right. And you don't hear a lot of success of, you know, uh, I have a successful business and a successful, you know, profit share because I patented. Like, that's not mm. the, you know, the go to. Like, it doesn't have a great PR department. <laughs> but patent is like, it's super, it's super important to, like you said, protect your intellectual property. Um, and, also that it's public knowledge after you know what I mean after a time and the technology can be built upon and built upon absolutely and that's why the number of patents that reference it is a metric and yes yeah and so it's interesting that there there was a study done by Yale where they looked at what might be the differences in gender in terms of the way patents are oh yes and they found that uh, female patent applicants with traditionally female names yeah. Let me get these numbers wrong. Um, we're about 10% less likely to get a patent. <gasps> really? Whereas women with names that were more rare or less clearly gendered were only right. about 2% less likely. Mm. This is men. like the application thing mm-hmm. all over again. It is. Oh, my God. Right? And so when you're looking at this, this is one of the things about those sort of classical ideas of well women don't get as many patents it must be because they don't invent things well right also, or is it a bias in the system right and so there's some yeah. some movement being done now that says hey why should the patent reviewers even know what somebody's name is correct. why would they need to know that correct nope. and what's the patent what's the purpose exactly that's what it should look at and these things are deeper there was you know both um Getting the patent appears, there, there appears to be a gender barrier. There also appears to be a gender barrier in terms of how many times a patent is referenced. Oh, okay. Mm. The more traditionally female names leading a patent can, re- you know, associated with about a 30% reduction in the number of oh. references. So all of these things, right, you're not as well known as an inventor, and then that becomes a commercial barrier. Mm. And mm. Um, so in a lot of this stuff, when you're looking at the different barriers, to success is very subtle and this isn't really a science thing yeah but the um it's a sexism thing well and (laughs) there was a a study done with major orchestras where they would have Mm. you know where they started putting up a curtain yes and that made a little bit of a difference and then when they put down a carpet so the reviewers couldn't Mm. hear the high heels oh it changed it dramatically oh wow so again all of these things we need those perspectives yes and we aren't even necessarily aware of those biases right exactly not until we're challenged with it and be like hey just judge something on its availability on its talent on its yeah right and and interesting something like the commercial merit of an invention i mean how do you even judge that right if the thing has never existed before (laughs) how do you know if it is useful right and we look back from 40 or you know Okay, so the 60s are now. I know. 60 years in the past. It's not 40 years ago. That's crazy. Wow. It's now 60 years not ago was no. the 40s. Hard you would think I'm after old. 20 years we would get used to it. But <laughs> Never. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I will always think that 1960 was 40 years ago. Yeah, the 21st century still feels like the future. I'm old. I blame shitty math. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going with. It's like, no, I got right? a nice even number and I'm remembering it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Well, I mean, it's like uh, the Hedy Lamarr's famous patent um, mm-hmm. was for a secret communication system. Um, she pitched it to the army. The army said, oh, you're too pretty you're to cute. be inventing things. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't understand the, you know, unhackable technology. I mean, it became Wi-Fi. I yeah. mean, if you would have just been, it's a secret communication system for torpedoes. People would have been like, yeah, no, we don't need that. It's fine. <laughs> But uh, who doesn't need Wi-Fi? So, mm-hmm. oh, and also the torpedoes needed to communicate too. They did. Like the, they needed yeah. to hit their target and not be hacked. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So the thing that isn't in the history books about Marie Van Bitten Brown is: did she try to commercialize it and right. fail? She did. They did set it up in house. Gotcha. Um, and of course, it, the drawings show it taking up a lot of space. Right. Because commercials <laughs> and all those things were or commercials. Cameras were mm-hmm. much bigger. You know. Yes. Um, but the 
principles that she came up with yeah. have become the basis for an industry that isn't just home security, but business security and, mm-hmm. you know, thinking about how you can monitor things and uh, keep track of them in a different way. Right. And feel secure in your surroundings. And then also if it's like, oh, no, no, that's just the mailman delivering something mm-hmm. late. Oh, thank goodness. I'll put the shotgun away. <laughs> right. And you don't have to open the door to see who's there or be standing right. at the door to see who's there. And if it is your sister coming with groceries, you can just push a button and let her in. And right. all of those things that are highly convenient, this was a really novel system at the time. Right, exactly. And still in the practicality use today, you have one of those security. I, do. I was going to say, what I is have, the thing you I have? Can, I can watch my, my front porch. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can hear my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a, it's we can sound. like tell when we get delivery deliveries. Uh, it saves it as a video, so we can watch it later. See, uh, we we can uh, unlock unlock the front door. From oh, here. it does have that. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Ooh, neat. And I think if we're in in the house, I think you can talk to the front door from the main box. Oh, gotcha. If it I is, I usually like just a- hide in the other room. <laughs> I did Fair. It. So what was it? We, a couple weeks ago, I was in the front room, and we have curtains that are like they're pretty see through. They're not. They they're not that there. much. Um, well, I was like, I was sitting there, and I got a phone call. So I was just like, I don't know that number. Didn't answer. Right. A couple of months later, there's someone at my door, and I'm just sitting there at the table, and I was like, in uh, T Rex mode. I was like, if I stay perfectly still. They can't well, see me if see I me. don't move. And then my phone rang again, and I could see the guy on the front porch had his phone out. It was uh, oh, we they were, were getting, calling. Yeah, the we call were getting, was coming from right outside the house. <laughs> we were getting windows replaced, and he's dropping off a thing to put in the front window. But I was just like, <gasps> now I want to know if Katie's ever had this problem, because Katie and I usually have the same scenario of bra off, day off. Yeah. Mm. What do you do when somebody comes to the door and it's already bra off time? Um, if I can, I just ignore it. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Same. All right, I will same. not go to the door. <laughs> um, second choice. Yeah. Because I'm lucky. Um, I'm in a relationship with a hermit. There so you go. he's always home and he doesn't wear a bra ever. Her. Look at that. So there's no difference. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll send him to the door. He has there to go, go pick, get all the takeout. And in worst case scenario, <laughs> if I need to get my own carry out food oh, from the door, the humanity past business hours, <laughs> I will put on a very thick sweater and kind of right. squeeze my arms together <laughs> in front of me. Sweet. Yeah. I did have yep. one scenario. It was somebody was knocking at the door. It was like an ungodly hour. You were already awake, but I, it was probably like 6 30 AM. Katie gets up really, really early. And I was kind of like, if you come knocking on my door at this time, you're going to get no bra. Mm, yeah, you get what you deserve. I still had like, oh, obviously clothes on, but you know, I'm just saying, this is what you get. If you knock mm-hmm. on the door, congratulations. And I'll also be mad by the way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just wondered. <laughs> yeah. There's been many times that I have texted, hey, Katie, you want to come over? No, it's bra off, day off time. Yeah, so that's, sorry, a, that's a hard pass right mm. there. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been interested in the security systems that they have out there now because they have like tons of, did you know one of them, and I this isn't an endorsement, but it's called the Cami. That's my daughter's name. Oh, that's funny. And so I showed to Cammy the like the video. She's like, no. <laughs> and, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, but Cammy's watching the house with Cammy in it. She's like, oh. no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she does not like having her name on anything. It doesn't matter what it is. But oh. the idea that Cammy was gonna keep you safe, she's like, no. <laughs> no, I've been thinking about the the one that we have. It also has another thing that'll go with the garage door. Oh yeah, so yeah. you can open and shut the garage door. I mean, that's because... nice if you forget to close it, and then you're, or or you're it's gone. nice if you're like me in like every day you turn around because you're like, did I shut the garage door? <laughs> right. And then you're late for work <laughs> because you turned around. Let's see, I helped a coworker <sighs> with this problem. If you can get in the habit, take a picture of the garage door before you leave the house. Oh, nice. yeah. So that just kind of gets you in that frame yeah. of mind of I did I mean, check. You don't have I did to do it. every time, but if you do it, uh, 
I you don't make know. A habit. She she was yeah. like it was really bugging her, and I was like, no, I understand because let me tell you a story about my anxiety and the hair straightener. <laughs> Did I leave the hair straightener on? <laughs> Is my so whole house gonna so burn down? So especially if I'm going out of town for like an entire weekend, I will literally take a picture of my outlet with nothing plugged into it. <laughs> Makes you feel let better. Me, let me share my crazy. <laughs> now you guys know why I went straight to psychology for my science. Bring it, Katie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, some of the technology for security that it's evolved into is really cool. Stuff like security that was um, designed to tell if there were termite, termites in a building. So it's oh. a listening system. Ooh. Nice. And then you can hear if there's something strange going on. And then, you know, the monitoring people can tell are those human voices or is it something else is it a rat so, in the walls yeah right exactly or the cameras that can like oh i want to see anybody who was in a blue shirt that came in and they can go find that footage oh, so some of those creepy. algorithms are cool and the stuff that they do <laughs> and for, creepy but still cool if you're looking for the guy <laughs> yeah or for like retail and uh, like those grocery store self checkout. Oh yeah, they yeah, have yeah. Cameras that can tell if you are putting your product where it should go in that in uh, that thing or if you're not scanning it. Like even right. though there's no human watching you, there are cameras watching you. Yeah. And so that helps. It doesn't matter. You know. It always says it's not in the basket. <laughs> it's it in does. the basket. It's please I swear it's in the basket. The, please place the item in the in, <laughs> it's there. It's fine. I have the terrible yeah. time of like taking it out of the bag. No, I want this to go in this bag. And then once I have taken it out of the you original, I have you, ruined it. You cannot you cannot <laughs> move them. No, you I cannot. Know. But yeah, the technology <laughs> has evolved a lot. And yeah. it, it can kind of do all of these really cool things. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Ton, ton, ton. The applications know no bounds. But yay! Yeah, I think fascinating, she's yeah. Amazing with the security. And just the fact that she combined so many different things right. into the security system right. and that we keep that combination mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. As like the, it has to have this to feel secure. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless of not if she made a whole bunch of money or didn't make any money on it, she probably didn't make a whole bunch of money she, on it. It probably didn't make any money on it at right. all. Right, exactly. It was still kudos to get inventing it mm-hmm. and having her name on it and seeing it through to practicality. So I wow. demand a drunk history about her. I know, right? Yeah, we need more, mm-hmm. more women inventors. Yes. Because those numbers are horrible. I mean, like... How many years were they driving around in cars before was windshield it Mary wipers. Anderson? Uh huh. Yeah. Mary Anderson invented the windshield, windshield wiper. Like, yeah. Like that seems so dumb. I know. And they waited <laughs> for her patent to expire before putting them on cars as standard, so they wouldn't have to pay her. So you wouldn't have to pay her because you know mm-hmm. paying people. Yeah. But it was also the automotive in- industry. They did that to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Headlights weren't like standard until that patent was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what else? But yeah, certain things. I mean, mm-hmm. let me just put it this way. My dad has seven patents. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't pay for them. The company he worked for did. But it's one of those things where it's like, get that, you know, go mm-hmm. and patent to register. Be like, I invented something. Bam. My name is on it. Yeah. My husband's got his name on one or two. At See? Work, and it's cool. It's very cool. Did he get the certificates? They're, they're framed in his work. Yes. Yep. No. There you go. Yes. Because I think that's cool. Because I know it's like an option where you don't have to like, you know, get it. But it's like, get it. I know. I know, right? So does the company then own that patent? Yeah. Your name will still be on it, but the company will own the rights and the IP to it. If the company paid for it. Like whoever pays for it owns the, the, yeah. But do they get like residuals from it if, if it somebody off? needs to use some part of it and also mm-hmm. patents are different they're like so they're like 7 14 like there's different life mm-hmm. t- uh, however long you buy it and some you can renew and some you can't so um so it just depends and also people if they want to use partial or like one mm-hmm. bit of the patent and not the full thing so like with uh with marie if they just wanted to use the camera part mm-hmm. you know what i mean like a, then it would be like well just a percentage of it yeah. or a lot of people just like screw it i'm gonna do it on my own and see if anybody sues me <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of that. patent trolls to just sue you and yeah yes. that whole thing becomes a mess but mm-hmm. still patents are cool exactly they're right. one and if the, you have the <laughs> drawing and i'll put it in the show notes too the drawing of hers i really yes. love the detail in her drawing right i think patents are gorgeous yeah. <laughs> when they have an illustrated draw. is there somebody like sleeping 
there's somebody sleeping in a bed. <laughs> yeah, and there's just a lot of detail and all the different pieces and parts and, yeah. you know, coming up with that. And that's this is the other thing that we see not only in invention, but just kind of in life, that if you're trying to make a system better, one of the ways to do it is support the women because they're the ones thinking about keeping the home safe and the kids right. safe and the right the whole way, village if you put it you know what I mean it's mm-hmm. much more a systems approach oftentimes right exactly and so then you get uh, bigger benefits right for more people because it's a different approach yeah I think let's close us out on that because it was okay. brilliant okay. close uh, out exactly. well that wraps it up for this week. Join us next week as our next gal pal shares her one cool science thing as Gal's Guide to the Galaxy podcast continues. Thanks for listening. Woo-hoo. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gal's Guide patron today. Thanks for listening. <laughs>